Hi guys. So today's video is not a brand new or original concept. It's me talking about tropes that I don't love in books. You guys I'm sure have seen plenty of other people do this and I'll admit that while there are plenty of things that bug me in books, I don't know if technically these are tropes, but I'm gonna call them tropes because they can be summed up in like a couple words and you guys will totally know what I'm talking about. Also because when I start to go off about something I have a tendency to really go off and take forever <laughs> to talk about them, I'm only gonna discuss five tropes in books that I can't stand. If you like it, let me know and I'd be happy to rant some more about other stuff I don't like. Anyway, the first thing that drives me absolutely crazy in books is preachiness. When characters in books seem to be basically the author trying to tell the world what they should think, that drives me nuts. I do feel the need to point out that this is not the same as there being a flawed society or a flawed character or a group of characters in a book that feel one way and then people automatically associate that one feeling that the characters have to the author and think that's what the author believes. That's not quite what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when authors very clearly are like, this is why this is the way it is. Come on, please, you random person who writes books, you don't have all the answers. You don't have all the answers in the world. Another thing in books that I can't stand is when characters are like, I can save myself, but really they can't save themselves. It's no surprise this is, I think, stemmed from the fact that in so many stories for so long, like the princess was re rescued by the prince. So now it's like, oh, we want the girls to rescue themselves. They don't need a man. But not everybody can save themselves. If in your story, the character very clearly is not prepared to fight and they're not prepared to like have all these amazing maneuvers of escape and things like that and then they insist that they can do it anyway it's like no you can't now all you're doing is you're making your character stupid now it's just the opposite of what you wanted to say before you wanted to say like look how independent and strong this individual is and now it's like look how obnoxious and foolish this person is don't just tell me the character can save themselves and make everything work out to prove that they can actually show me that the character knows what they're doing, that they're skilled, that they have expertise. The next thing that drives me crazy in books is when characters feel guilt-ridden for way too long. It really isn't a big deal to me at all if characters recognize that something happened and they might have potentially played a role in it, but I think most of us can, you know, we can think of multiple stories where something happened and a character feels awful about it and they're like, oh my gosh, this is all my fault. If I just hadn't done this, if I just hadn't done this, which is a very realistic reaction for human beings to have and I like it because it's self-reflection, but when it goes on and on and on and on and on, at some point I'm like, ugh, like get over it already. Because let's face it, even if it was their fault, just dwelling on the fact that it was their fault is not making things better. It's not making anybody's lives any bit better than they were before so why don't you get off your butt and try to like do something about the fact that you messed up before so that things won't be as bad now the worst is when it's not actually their fault whatsoever like okay they feel that they were very strongly connected to whatever event transpired that was bad but but really they were very loosely involved in it if at all but they still decide in their own brain that it was their fault i do not like when that goes on for a really long time because if your character starts to just be useless and for for no other reason but to just be like look now this character's useless so we can introduce these other characters becoming stronger and it's like gosh no like i liked that person another thing in books that uh drives me up a wall it's not really that big of a deal it's just not for me because i feel like i'm fooled is when uh you know romance is pretending to be a fantasy book i don't mind if people like romance i love a good romance in my fantasy books but I like fantasy. I want the fantasy element to come first. If I want to read a romance book, I'll wander on over to the romance section. But sometimes it feels like authors have these love stories they want to write, which is great. That's super great. If that's the story you want to write, that's the story you should write. And then the marketing teams, or maybe even the authors, they try to push it as something it's really not. Because if most of the book I'm reading and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm getting a vibe, it's like, these two characters like will they won't they and then it's will they won't they for a really long time and then also in this one chapter they go deal with this like fantastical thing they have to take care of but then like in the next chapter they're right back to the will they won't they i'm like this isn't fantasy and the last trope 
is one that I think goes kind of hand in hand often with romance, but it's not always romance. It can happen in friendships also, but that would be unnecessary tension. This is probably the most tropey of the tropes that I'm talking about, and it's one that I think lots of other people can't stand either. But man, ugh, it drives me crazy when these two characters, who maybe you really are wanting to get together, when they finally do get together and you're like, yay, finally, and then like immediately something happens where it's like, oh no, like I can't be with this person, and you're like, ugh, why, why? Because this like one tiny, it's like, wait, so earlier when I was wearing this blue dress and you told me it was the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but really you like red dresses better, you lied to me, I can't trust you, and you're like, this is so dumb. Ugh, it drives me nuts, and it's so frustrating because there is, there is a difference between couples getting together, facing struggles and overcoming them together. And then there's also, you know, the opposite of that, which is what so many authors seem to rely on, which is, oh, well, like, I know that people have been wanting these characters to get together for a super long time, and I, I mean, they finally do get together, but like, huh, I have to cause something for them to want to keep reading. And it's like, no, you don't. You like, you can make the story itself really good, and then you don't have to rely on all this unnecessary tension. Anyway, that's it for the five tropes that drive me crazy in books. I have plenty more. I have a whole list on my phone that I've been keeping anytime I'm reading a book. I'm like, you know what? I don't like what this happens. I've been like putting it in my phone. So if you guys want me to talk more about some other things that drive me crazy in books, just let me know and I'd be happy to do it. Let me know if any of the things I mentioned drive you guys crazy as well or any of your really least favorite tropes in books. But anyway, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the little bell icon so you get notified when I post new videos and check out some of my videos right over here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.